welcome to the show, episode number 430. I am your host, Norman Sanjo. And well, we got some news for you this week. And it's pretty awesome news, really. Um, It's more of updates and stuff, and what's to come for the future. Uh, also merchandising. And, well, stuff. Yes, stuff. But anywho, let's get right into it. So first up is new cast of characters confirmed for Generation Five of My Little Pony in September 2021. Starting with movie. Hmm. So <clears throat> I'm gonna read what Sylvester wrote. Some big news has arrived out of Festival of Licensing. My Little Pony Generation Five is finally getting some information release after almost a year of silence on it. We knew Toilet Sparkle World. Oh, I'm sorry. We knew Twilight Sparkle wasn't returning, but it looks like Hasbro is going for a full-on brand new cast of sorry, cast for this one, and seen in the quote. <coughs> okay, um, next up, the world of Equestria is expanding to introduce a new generation of ponies to a new generation of fans with more humor, heart, and music than ever before, Hasbro hopes that audience will be swept away by the new cast of ponies and the incredible adventure that awaits them. Fall in love with My Little Pony uh, <laughs> Fall in love with My Little Pony all over again when <clears throat> all sorry, when the all new computer animated theatrical feature hits theaters Everywhere in September 2021. Uh, the date for the movie was revealed way back in 2019, and pretty much everything from the early leaks has been completely changed up at this point. We really are going to, sorry, we are really going in blind. Hopefully, it's good. So, yeah, um, for those who don't really remember, uh, I'm just going to recap what happened in 2019. In 2019, there were leaks about G5. One of those few leaks were that the characters were still going to be the main six, but they were going to change some aspects of them. Uh, that being Twilight Sparkle was an Earth Pony, Pinkie Pie was going to be a... Uh, Pegasus, and so on. But it seems that that idea is thrown out for a much more, in my opinion, better idea where the characters here are, or this generation has their own leads and heroes. So, they say that there's going to be a new batch of main six here. Uh, to be honest, we don't even know if going to be main six. It could be 5, 3, 2, who knows. But 6 is a good round number. It works for uh, the Rangers, it works for Ponies, and it works for other shows. Avatar The Last Ember had 6, I think. But there was Aang, Soka, Toph, Katara, Zuko. It was 5. But still, uh, it's a nice round number. Like, it's a good number. So, <clears throat> um... For this one, I do agree that changing it up with the characters is a good idea because um, you're going in fresh, you're going in new. Uh, a good analogy for this is Power Rangers. When you watch a Power Rangers series, uh, they always change the um, team, world, and crew. Uh, some Rangers... Do mention previous rangers. Uh, one of the popular one is Tommy Oliver. Uh, they always mention him, and somehow he got roped in to become a few rangers. So with this one, I'm not hundred percent sure how they're going into this because when they say that this is going to be a new world, does this have anything? Or oh, sorry, does it? Is it a continuation of the previous one going into the new one? Or is this just their own thing? Uh, a good example is from G1 to G3. 
uh, what happened to two i think they called themselves my little pony tales something like that it's kind of a down to earth kind of story uh the animation style and pony figures if i'm not mistaken were still uh, similar to one it's just the world was different so uh, a big huge leap in animation was from one to three and then three to four we're not going to count 3.5 that was a mistake so anywho um from jumping generations we can see that okay um certain styles certain scenarios were there so now um getting back on track i don't mind i i I can't wait to see where this goes because uh, having them at least try something new would be really interesting but this is issue this is a huge gamble for them because uh, we already know the main six they're established characters we love them we have a what you call this um, attachment to them so going in fresh going in new it's a smart choice where we are going in blind we don't have any preconceived notions for the show what worries me is that the show is going full computer animated uh, this means that it's going to go in 3d what worries me more is that they're going in the new generation with a theatrical feature which means that <clears throat> they're going to introduce the new crew in a movie uh, same thing what they did with uh, the original My Little Pony uh, the show was introduced in sorry the show started out as a movie and here's the thing about movies uh, movies are usually about an hour and a half Let, let's just be generous an hour and 40 minutes long 45 minutes you're going to be really generous and the budget for it is fixed so you are going to see the best in terms of animation quality what worries me is when they go beyond that when they hit uh, the tv series because i'm sure that generation 5 is going to be a what you call this series they're going to introduce the characters in the movie and then they're going to start the series with their own uh, things and shenanigans so what worries me is the level of animation because you're going to have really big budget for the movie and a moderate amount for the series and i'm glad to say that uh, 3d animation has grown a lot since the early days of reboot and beast wars and nowadays uh, 3d animation uh, uh the 2016 tmnt was a good example uh, Miraculous Ladybug is a good example of uh, 3D animation that's series based. And what else? There's more, maybe the Lego series and so on. I mean, uh, there is a few out there. Um, mixed animation like Beastars is one of those things that work too. So we'll see how this goes later. Um, is it what, going to be in September 2021? So yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I have high hopes and I hope that the new series pulls me in like how it did with Generation 4. So anyway, um, let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is Hasbro running an online convention in September. Yay! <clears throat> so, Hasbro Pulse Con 2020, where fans come first. Yes. Hmm. So Hasbro has announced a new convention this year for September, completely online. Everything else goes on right now. The intro video, blah, 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 so on. Mm-hmm. So what is uh, Hasbro PulseCon? Um, Hasbro HasCon, as they previously mentioned before, was a Hasbro pe- Hasbro specific convention where uh, everything. Hasbro related was there. Uh, that was G.I. Joe's, My Little Ponies, Transformers, uh, all the Hasbro board games, 
Uh, those are Monopoly, Battleship, Clue, Twister, uh, Nerf. Don't forget Nerf. Nerf is one of those things. And did I mention Magic the Good Ring? Yes, that's one of their IPs too. Well, it's not really one of their IPs. They own Wizard of the Coast. So uh, having that IP there makes sense. Yes. So anyway, um, previously, uh, people who went there get to see stuff, get to hear news. It's it's like any other convention when they do stuff, they they announce uh, things that are going to come out, new products, and just give people a chance to get well to get to talk to the people in doing the stuff that they like and stuff. Um, usually over there they also sell exclusive Hascon merch. If I'm not mistaken, for the first one they ran, they had the, for Magic the Gathering, they had a set of trees. Um, uh, silver border magic cards where they have Grimlock, Dinosaur, something, I forgot. And then there's a Nerf set, but in terms of card the games, like Magic the Gathering, represented or representing the other brands like the Transformers, Nurse and also D&D. Uh, funny enough, the D&D card was reprinted in an unset, but you don't even hear me talk about that one. Um, what else? <clears throat> As we move on to 2020, uh, it seems that they changed their thing to Hasbro Pulse. If I'm not mistaken, Hasbro Pulse is one of their stores. I'm going to go full camp for this because I don't want to trigger anything that's not um, wanted. Hasbro Pulse. There you go. Give me a second. Uh, Okay. Hasbro Pulse Home. Let's see. Uh, Okay, here you go. Yeah, so it seems that there's not much like there, there's a lot of toy news that like you can get your uh, lightsaber for two fifty dollars or you can get this uh, transformation wars for cybertron i forgot the name I, I don't know what it's called for stuff i i think this is exclusive and baby yoda yay so what is this store yes store Let's see. Uh, yeah, you, I think you could buy them now if you really want to. If you really want to. Oh yeah, K two S O. Uh, but let's see brands. Okay, let's go for brands. Let's go for Marvel, Transformers, Power Ranger, G.I. Joe's, other brands. Let's see, view all other brands. Um. Ah, okay. We got the. Oh yeah, you can get you can pre-order it at the Hasbro Pulse Store if you're interested in the My Little Pony crossover Power Rangers thingy. Yep, yep. So wow, Pop Pros Monopoly set, that's cool. <laughs> okay, but still <clears throat> But still, um that's the website there. There's there's stuff going on. Um if you are interested Go check it out. Go try it out. Something like that. I mean, it's going to be in September 25th to 26th. It's a two-day con online. So basically, you can just stay at home and check it out. I, I hope it's not a... But knowing corporate, they might want to charge you just to watch the event. Because streaming is expensive. Yeah, streaming is expensive. But anywho... Um, there's a few stuff there. Go check it out. Who knows? Some things might pop up. And lastly, new video showing of hidden the acceptable lines from Mighty Jacks. So a while back we reported on the freakishly intriguing figures and it seems that we have video for it now. I'm not gonna play it because I don't want to get striked, but you go check it out for yourself. And they show the whole range of the ponies and I have to say that they're really cool in size like their size is really good like it's a size where i wish that we had more of the figures are 
looking good. They they have a hefty size and the models are good. They're not like your generic blind back ponies. Um, the only part that freaks me out is the dissected part. Yes, I I talk about this one before, and yes, it's not for me. What else? Uh, they show variants. So they showed the original figure, and they showed the variants. The variants have what? There's the crystal pony line where it's um enchanted, like this one here. Ooh. But there's also the variant of the Rainbow Dash one, where she is in her Wonderbolts uniform. So, yay, that's awesome. Uh, if you are interested in it, uh, I, I guess you can try find it online and stuff. And if you're in the States where this happens to be, you can get it easily. I'm not 100% sure what's the ratio count because uh, they're in a huge box where... You can get them. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's one of those things where I think there's a few. Hmm. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. But hey, if you're into the toy collection, go ahead. It, it should be fun. So anywho, that is the news for this week. Um, so let's all move on to the next topic. And next topic is what I've been doing with my week. So my week has been rather... No, it's a lot of the same. I've been playing a lot of Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, the game is really awesome. I am far. I am on chapter 3 or act 3. Um, I think I'm almost done, I think. And what else? Um, the game is really good. Um, it's one of those games where... Um, uh, how do I put this? Almost a good example is GTA in Japan, except not really. It's similar to that feel. So yeah, that's one of the things that I've been doing. The other is, uh, I think I saw a movie. I'm not 100 percent sure if I told you guys this before, but uh, I've watched Scoob. That's fun. You guys should go watch it. And I think I did talk about this before. I watch it in theaters. Yes. <clears throat> what else? Um. What else? What else? Uh. Other than that, nothing much really. Uh. Just besides the work life stuff, it's been boring. But um, going happen. Sorry, happening soon is I might go watch another movie. Uh. Two really. It's it, it's a throw off in between Mulan or Tenet. I'm not sure how you say it, but yes. So, Mulan, the live-action movie, I've heard a lot of negative feedback from it. Like, people say that it's not great, it's not fun or something like that. And you know what? I don't know. I- I've seen the original... <laughs> I've seen the Disney animated movie, and that was a lot of fun. And it was a musical and whatnot. And it's Disney for the time. But this one, I don't know. I- I'm just going to go in with an open mind and uh, enjoy the movie as it is. Also, I get to watch one of my favorite Magic the Gathering YouTubers in it. Uh, he's Jimmy Wong. He plays the role of Ping. Okay, so I'm just going to enjoy that. Other than that, um, nothing much. Yeah, just going to hope that things are going to be fine. Yes. Uh, but anywho, um, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. <clears throat> so, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbsugmail.com. Uh, <clears throat> you can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. You <laughs> also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stay to radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLife.com. Links are in the show notes. Uh, if you would like to, well, listen to more of us, but in a different format or a different show, we do have the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you catch me, Silver Quill, and Totera reviewing the Pony episodes, comics, and specials. Sometimes we like to do other things than ponies, and that's 
animes, cartoons, comic books, and movies. This week, we are going to do something fun. Um, It's a surprise for you guys, but let's just say it's going to be weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash mbsshow. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also Master of Light. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. you got no idea how much you guys help me. And for you guys who are listening to this now, who are not a Patreon supporter, I do hope that you uh, consider supporting us. Uh, a dollar would go a long way. Five and more would be awesome. And yeah, um, if you... Uh, want to please do so if not it's okay the show will still go on uh, it's just helped the burden of life but anyway I have been Norman Sanzo and thank you for listening to the MBS show I'll catch you guys next week see ya see ya